sure if you'll be able to tell or not, but we drove down those gravel roads yesterday several hundred miles. Spent most of the day on the gravel roads from Thompson to Gillum. It's Highway 280 up there. And that highway is about 200 miles or 300 kilometers long. It's a little bit of dirt on it. Like I was saying, this is Grand Rapids, Manitoba. Got about five hours left to our yard where I'm going to drop this trailer. And someone else is going to deliver it into Winnipeg tomorrow for me. I'm going home to get a reset on my logbook. And get some work done there. There's always work to be done. Speaking of, old blue's all warmed up, ready to go. Kind of dirty today, so uh, we're just going to try to sneak home. Call this one riding dirty. Hopefully nobody sees us.
poof, just like that, we got home. I was focused today, laser focused, going home. I didn't even clean the truck out or anything. I parked it in the shop, I grabbed my laundry. Like a missile. Straight on target, going home. I'll go back to the shop tomorrow and clean a few things out. But for now, just wanna get home. It was a good day though, uh, uneventful. Well, I guess you could say it was pretty eventful. A lot of construction, a lot of construction. And they're doing that road repair on Highway 6 again, south of Grand Rapids, where they put gravel down on the highway and then just little tiny signs like, hey, you better slow down when you meet oncoming traffic, okay? Be, be good. The, those signs that no one listens to, they just come roaring past you. I had someone pass me. Remember when someone passed me when they did that on the Trans Canada a few years ago when it, a rock came up from their tires and smashed my driver's side window? People don't care. Yet these construction companies, they're still being told to replace our main provincial highways with a layer of gravel. And I get there's a technique to what they're doing, right? And yes, I'm complaining about it. Is it really a Trucker Josh vlog if he doesn't complain about something? You know me by now. Excuse me, coming in, coming up. Just gonna merge right in here. See, that's how you merge. Be aggressive, be, be aggressive. Going home, stay out of my way. You, uh, yeah, they, 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 they put loose gravel, loose gravel down on the road, on a paved road, and then just expect traffic to slow down for weeks until that gravel packs in and becomes not loose gravel anymore. It just blows my mind. It's a really, really cheap way of fixing highways, and that's what Manitoba is known for. So, just beware if you go up Highway 6. You might have uh, chips in your windshield. I was available, uh, I, I got lucky. I didn't get any chips in my windshield, but I did chip my brand new convex mirror on my driver's side. Oh, I'll have to show you next time, maybe tomorrow. But uh, since my rear axle doesn't have anything covering it, rock spray up there, because the RGN doesn't have anything covering that, right? So a rock whipped up from my rear tire on my driver's side, passed my cab, and smoked my convex mirror, and put a dent and a, a crack in it. Brand new mirror that I just got put on. But that was the only thing. Other than that, the truck seems okay. I'm gonna go back there tomorrow, like I said, wash it off and take a good look at it, tighten all the nuts and bolts. Or I guess tighten all the bolts. Is that how it is? Or do you, you tighten the nuts too? No, you just tighten the, the bolts to the nuts, right? Oh, whatever. I'm almost home here. <coughs> Who's discovered their voice box? <coughs> Who learned how to make sounds? <coughs> he knows how to make all kinds of sounds. They don't make sense yet, but... <laughs> it makes sense to him. <laughs> He's definitely discovered his voice box. We had this jumper that just arrived so excited i hope i fit <laughs> <laughs> so a jumper is just what it sounds like it's that little disc, disc circle device you put the baby in the middle and they learn to use their legs and they jump right yeah exorcisers i think are the old words for them i think that's what they were called when we were kids exorcisers why would Exorcaucer. they Makes me think of exorcism. Why would they call it an exorcisor? It's for exercise and it's in the shape of a saucer, I guess. And an exercise is the demons. <laughs> an exorcisor, is that serious? Do you guys know what is an exorcisor? Why would they call it that? That's what I call them. But I guess they're called jumpers. <laughs> That's funny. Jumper makes more sense to me. But yeah, it does. <laughs> we're gonna put it together now and uh, let them try it out. Little guy is learning to use his legs. He'll be running around before we know it. They put it in a bag inside a box. My question is if it's already in a box, why do you need the bag? <laughs> it's kind of a waste, it seems. It's not even sealed or anything. Okay, so this is uh, what we're working with here. This is gonna match his uh, thing we got right over there. What's that called? Uh, play gym. That's a play gym. So he lays underneath there and lights go off and. He's really liked that thing. Loves it. So, this will match. I'm just gonna figure out how to put it together. You can do it, Dad. We have this. That's the seat. With massive, look at all these tags. This tag, this tag, this tag, that tag, this tag. 
There's another tag in there. There's another tag over here. Every child thing, like, I didn't know this until we had a kid, but everything you buy for a kid comes with these giant warnings. Really, it's just for the stupid parents who leave their kids unattended all the time and neglect them. Yeah, because you read through these and you're like, who would do that? Yep. Who did this that they had to put this on here? It's like, never leave child unattended. Always keep child in view while the child is in product. You never, don't say. Never use near the stairs. Yep. Somebody had their baby fall down the stairs in one of these because they put them right beside the stairs. And I think this thing has wheels, right? It moves? Uh, no. Those no. are totally stationary. But they can still move if you're on... What else does it say? Uh, to avoid tipping over, place the product on a flat, level surface. Where are you guys setting these things up? On picnic <laughs> tables? Side of a hill in a ditch or something's rolling down these, the hill? These warnings are for people that shouldn't be reproducing, <laughs> but for some reason are allowed to, because human oh. rights. You know, we were... <laughs> we were... We were talking about that. We talked about this a lot when we, because uh, we went through IVF. We had fertility issues, unexplained fertility issues. It seems like the people who are prepared and ready to have kids have these fertility issues, and they're in the fertility clinics. We have we met a whole bunch of them through the process, and uh, the people who shouldn't be having kids have no problem and have like six of them. They're crazy fertile. Yeah, they can have kids, no problem. But the people who are prepared and responsible, thirty thousand dollars per kid. Um, am I taking too long? One Daddy, second. set up the toy, let's go! There's also a strangulation hazard. Strings can cause strangulation. Do not place items with a string around child's neck. So, you know, they had to put this on here. In case you didn't know this already. Do not suspend strings over products or attach strings to toys. Humanity. <laughs> okay, we're gonna set this up and then I'll show you what it looks like. This is very technical and scientific. Scientific. And there's no instructions that came with it, just so you know. I put it all I put together all of that without instructions. Okay, so we got like a Ray up there. What's his name again? Mr. Ray. Mr. Ray. That's easy to remember. That's Pearl. And I'm not sure. I can't remember that guy's name. Pearl and we'll call him Daryl. He does look like a Daryl. Looks he? like a Daryl. Nemo here. Oh man, I'm gonna have so much fun in this thing. <laughs> it's your size too. <laughs> right. And there we go. This thing is huge. Yikes. Look at this. We got Nemo right here. Mm-hmm. We got Dory. Oh, she doesn't spin. Thought she did. <laughs> Fun little toys right there. And we got whatever this guy is here. Okay, okay. And we got... Earl. And Daryl. Daryl. Mine. Mine. <laughs> And then we got this guy here. Squirt. There's a fancy little tune. And this thing spins around too, so he can like face whatever direction he wants to. So that should be fun. You forgot about Bruce. One Bruce. Hey Bruce. Fish are friends, not food. So I think Theo's really gonna enjoy that, but we gotta wait, he's napping right now. And last night when I got home from a trip, I woke him up from a nap and that was a bad life decision. <laughs> we're not gonna do that again. We're gonna wait till his nap's over and then he can try out his new jumper. <laughs> he needs it today. He's he's pretty grouchy. He's uh, He's teething, so. I mean, our baby's version of grouchy is nothing compared to some babies, but he's still not himself right now heartbreaking. I don't remember when I got my first teeth, but I know what a toothache feels like. I can just imagine the feeling of the, the, the teeth coming through the gums. It's awful. Like it's got to rip the skin apart, right, to get through and get all swollen and I can just imagine it in my head and it's not fun. 
So he's in that wonderful stage right now. And then after that stage, we have the toddler stage to look forward to. And he's a very active baby. So he's gonna be a, <laughs> he's gonna be a wild toddler, right? He's gonna be a good ba good little guy. I just think he's gonna be really, really active and I'm gonna get really, really skinny running after him. <laughs> At least we got the fenced yard. We just have to keep him out of the front yard. Keep him in the backyard and he can go crazy. Exactly. We're trying this outside. Okay, my boy, here we go. First time. Look at what mom and dad got you. No, put your legs in. Put your, put your feet in. <laughs> wow. Oh. Are you at the right level? Yeah, looks like it. Oh, wow. Is that Dory? <laughs> He's like, oh. Theo, what's that? Wow. Is he at the right level? Can he reach? I think he might need to be a little bit lower. Yeah, I think the other one was a little bit... Uh... There we go. Low as we can go, right? How low can you go? One level. <laughs> Wiener? I never had a jumper like that. Oh! Oh, yeah! Holy smokes. Oh, wow. Can you reach the bottom now? Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to turn you a little bit, okay, buddy? So you're facing Dada a little bit more. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> There's so much to see. His eyes. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you like the seahorse, buddy? That is, so it's quite the jumper. There's a lot to take in. <laughs> Just blown away. Whoa. What is this place? Whoa. Is that a shark? That's Dory and a seahorse. <laughs> Since when does our son sound like the turtle from Finding Nemo? <laughs> and it's good to be home. It always feels good to get home. I'm always kind of in a rush, just beelining it on my last day before getting here, but we made it. I'll be home for a little while now, so there'll be a little bit of home time content coming in the future. Got a few things that need work on the truck, so I'm taking care of that before we go out again. I'll see you guys real soon.